Once there lived a magician named Merlin, and he was the magician for the court of the great King Arthur. Now Merlin was the most learned and skillful enchanter the world had ever seen, and could take any form he pleased. Once he was traveling around the country as a poor old beggar, and he came to the home of a plowman and his wife. And upon finding out that he was hungry, they invited him in, and the wife prepared good hot soup for him. As he ate, Merlin could not help but notice that the man and his wife were unhappy, for they both wanted a child very much. Why, I wouldn't mind, the wife said, if he was no bigger than my husband's thumb. And straight away, Merlin decided to grant her wish. When the baby was born, he was so tiny that he could curl up for a nap in his mother's hand. And his regular cradle was a walnut shell lined with blue silk. Now the queen of the fairies came to see the little fellow, and she fluttered down to kiss him and said, You shall be called Tom Thumb. Then she sent for some of the other fairies, and they dressed Tom in an oak leaf hat with a shirt of silk web that the spiders spun, and trousers of feathers of all different colors. And his little shoes were of mouse's skin, tanned with the downy hair inside. Time passed, but Tom never grew any bigger than his father's thumb. Now, when Tom started playing with the other boys, they played with cherry stones because they had no marbles as we have now. And when Tom would lose all of his cherry stones in the game, he would slip inside another boy's bag and put some of the boy's cherry stones in his pocket, slip out of the bag, and so continue the game. He was a very cunning little boy, as you can see. One day, however, he was coming out of a bag, and the boy caught him and jerked the strings tight with Tom inside. Now, little Tom, said the boy, I've caught you and you shall pay for stealing. And with that, he shook the bag and Tom went flying around inside, hit by the cherry stones and badly bruised. He screamed and cried. And finally, the boy let him out. And poor Tom went limping home, having learned a very important lesson the hard way. A short time later, Tom's mother was making a pudding, and Tom, being very curious, climbed up to the edge of the bowl. And when his mother's back was turned, his foot slipped, and he fell into the batter, head and ears. And to make things worse, without his mother even noticing, she poured the batter into the pudding bag and put Tom and the pudding into the pot to boil. Tom couldn't cry out because of the thick batter, but he kicked and squirmed and kicked some more until his mother thought that the pudding was bewitched and threw it out the back door, bag and all. A poor tinker who was passing by picked up the pudding and put it in his pack. By this time, Tom could cry out because the pudding was more solid, so he screamed and kicked some more, which frightened the tinker, and he threw the pudding down and ran away. Well, the pudding bag broke all to pieces in the fall, and Tom crawled out. But how dreadful he looked, with batter hanging to his clothes. Oh, he really was a mess. But when he got home, his mother picked him up and put him in a teacup for a bath. And how Tom splashed. He loved to take baths. Then he put on a fresh, clean nightgown and was sound asleep in no time. One day, his mother took Tom with her to the meadow to milk the old red cow. And since the wind was very strong and about to blow Tom off his feet, she tied him by a string to a thistle. The red cow saw Tom's oak leaf hat and promptly took one big bite. And there Tom was among the big, frightening teeth. He screamed for help. Help! 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 And his mother stopped milking. Where are you, Tom? she cried. 
in the red cow's mouth, he called back. And the old cow was so surprised at what was going on in her mouth that she opened it very wide and Tom jumped out, fortunately into his mother's apron. So his mother put Tom into her apron pocket and hurried home. Sometime later, Tom's father made him a whip of barley straw so that Tom could help him drive the cattle. One day, as Tom was trying to get a calf back to its mother, Tom stumbled and went rolling head over heels into a furrow. Along flew a raven and swooped down and picked Tom up in his bill. The raven carried Tom far over the sea, and there he dropped Tom into the water. A large fish swallowed Tom before the little boy had been in the water any time at all. And, as it happened, the fish was immediately caught by King Arthur's fishermen and was brought to the palace kitchen. When it was being prepared for cooking, out jumped Tom and almost frightened the cooks to death. But the butler quickly regained his composure and picked Tom up and took Tom to King Arthur. His Majesty was so delighted with such a unique toy that he took Tom with him to the round table. And soon Tom became a great favorite with all of the knights. It is said that when King Arthur rode out on horseback, he took Tom with him. And if it should rain, Tom would creep into His Majesty's waistcoat pocket where he slept until the rain had passed. One day, King Arthur asked Tom about his parents, and Tom told him that they were as big as anyone else, but alas, they were very poor. So the king took Tom down to his treasury and told him that he could take as many gold coins as he could carry home to his parents. Now, this wasn't very generous of him, because poor little Tom could only lift one gold coin. But he valiantly put it on his back and journeyed 48 hours before he reached his home. His mother and father ran out to meet him and took him into the house, gave him something to eat, then let him rest up from his long, tiring journey. But after his visit home, Tom returned to the palace, and King Arthur had his tailor measure Tom for a new suit of clothes. The king also ordered a suit of armor to be made for Tom. And when it was finished, Tom was mounted on a mouse, and he rode out with the king on hunting trips. The nobility were delighted with the sight of Tom on his fine prancing charger, and Tom's popularity grew each day. A few weeks later, the king surprised Tom by presenting him with a little gold chair which His Majesty said was to be always near the throne, and Tom was to sit there when the king was holding court. And then he built a tiny little gold castle, and there Tom lived very comfortably. But the highest honor of all was when King Arthur had a grand ceremony and knighted Tom. And from that time on, he was called Sir Thomas. But all these honors were the undoing of Tom because the queen became very jealous and angry and vowed that she would have him beheaded. So Tom, knowing full well the danger of her wrath, crept into a snail shell and stayed there for two whole days. But he became so thirsty and hungry that he finally ventured out and saw a beautiful big butterfly. So he ran and jumped astride the butterfly, and away they went through the air. King Arthur and his knights tried to catch Tom and the butterfly, but they eluded every one of them and were last seen flying over the castle wall. And I'm told that Sir Thomas Thumb may still be riding that butterfly to this very day.